My name is Dana McFawn. I am the Director of Admissions at Questrom overseeing our residential programs. So our residential MBA programs as well as our specialized master's programs. We currently have three. We have an MS in Management Studies, we have an MS in Mathematical Finance and Financial Technology, and we have an MS in Business Analytics. It, it definitely varies from program to program. I would say, um, you know, for our um, MS in Financial Technology, um, uh, program that program in particular, you know, typically sees well over a thousand applications. Same with our business analytics program. Um, you know, again, year by year, the MS in management studies is a smaller program, so that certainly sees a little bit less. But you know, what what's important to know is that these are exactly what they're called for specialized masters. So um, they're extremely focused. So they are not right for everyone. It is uh, certainly a select type of uh, group or people who would who who for whom this, these programs would make sense. So it, it makes sense that that's what we would see with, with those programs. We do not require professional experience. We don't require professional experience for any of our programs. Although it's important for students to look at the class profiles for each program to get a sense of, of, of what is typical within the classroom. Um, for our MS and business analytics, um, the average amount of work experience is actually one year, so we do have candidates that come in with some experience, but it's small, it's one, which means we are certainly seeing candidates that are coming in straight from undergrad as well. Um, for the other two programs, um, our MS in Mathematical Finance and Financial Technology program, as well as our MS um, in Management Studies, we, we typically see people right from undergrad. For MS in Management Studies in particular, we actually prefer people to come right from undergrad because it's a very specific type of a degree. That particular program is actually looking for people who did not study business, who are coming out of undergrad realizing that they, they missed those skills. Um, and so that's a unique program where we're actually expecting people to likely not have experience. So we certainly could have experience in the other ones, but you know, it's a bit of a mix. People have, if they've reached uh, the decision to apply to a, a, a master's degree, they've decided they want a more specialized degree. They've decided they don't want an MBA. So, um, you know, we are still trying to figure out academic ability and what someone will contribute um, and whether or not the programs are a right fit, which is true of all of our programs and how we evaluate, um, you know, but everyone's background might be a little bit different. So, you know, for our, our three specialized master's programs, we, um, while the requirements do vary, as you mentioned, they typically include things like university level transcripts, your resume, letters of recommendation, and some sort of essay, either written, video, or both, depending on the program. Where things start to differ from each program could be in how we do interviews. Some programs might, some might not. Um, you know, whether the GMAT or GRE is required. Some might ask for it, but offer waiver opportunities. Some might not require it at all. So that's where you start to see some differences. But at the end of the day, we're looking at transcripts and resumes and recommendations and essays to try to understand whether or not our programs make sense and that someone could come in and be a strong contributor. For our specialized master's programs, there are set requirements for each of them. And some might be a video, some might be written, some might be both. Our three specialized degrees are all very unique. So certainly the processes are going to be different. Um, but some of our programs will require what we call video essays. And that is where we will use um, uh, this platform called Kira Talent, um, which is a company that we've contracted with, where our candidates will um, go into the platform. They will have an opportunity to practice. They don't have to worry about, about that. They will, can, can feel comfortable with the platform before they start recording. But once they hit go, they're going to get um, a, a handful of questions that they're going to answer verbally, you know, with, with recording. And so, you know, we'll ask a question, they'll have about 30 seconds to think of the, their answer, and then they'll have 60 seconds to record it. So some of our specialized platforms, uh, some, some of our specialized master's programs use that platform. Um, others have a written component and others do both. So it just depends which program you're applying to. The, the written component, 
It varies. We have some programs that will have a standard essay that we ask you to write about your interests and your goals. Um, our business analytics program, for example, the, the written essay is broken down into three short, short answer essays and they're done right in the application. So each, each one is a little bit different, but they're all getting at the same thing, right? They're all trying to figure out a little bit more about you and your background, why you're interested in the program you've chosen, how it's going to help you reach your goals. You know, that that's the, the crux of all of it. And then on top of it, if we can learn a little bit more about you personally, too, just to get a little bit more um, insight into who you are. Well, that helps us too, to have the opportunity to feel like we're getting to know you, too. So the goal is the same, regardless of which of the formats you'll be asked to do. But um, but yeah, there's different ways it could be done, depending on which program you apply to. This candidates get nervous and I get it. I think I would too, you know, being on video recorded just has this scary feel to it. I can promise you that we're not assessing your ability to record yourself. It's not meant to be scary. It really is meant to get to know you and understand your interests. So my best advice is just to be yourself, to know why you're doing this and be yourself. If you know why you've chosen to apply to our MS and management studies or business analytics, or mathematical finance programs, and you're able to articulate that in you know 60 seconds or less, which you know an elevator pitch is important to learn as part of this process. If you're able to do that and you're prepared for that, you'll be off to a good start when you do these videos. Um, the I believe the first question for any of any of the programs in which we offer videos, the first question is usually about why you want to do this, why you've chosen Questrom, and why you want this program. You probably know that or you wouldn't have chosen us. So, you know, feel confident in that. If there's subsequent questions, they're usually get to know you questions. So really, they're, they're not meant to stump you. They're not meant to trick you. They're to get to know more about you, see how you communicate and feel like we're able to make a bit of a connection with you. So, so to rest assured, not get nervous. You can practice before you start. Don't worry about that. If something goes wrong, you can reach out to us. But, you know, it's really just meant to, to, to get to know more about you, your goals, your choices. Questions like, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a few examples. You know, I, in the past, we have asked questions like, you know, tell us what you're passionate about and why. You know, tell us about, you know, what your teammates would say about you as a team, as a team member and why. Um, you know, in the past, we've asked the question, what's been the best gift someone's ever given you and why was that your your best gift, right? Like, um, if you could have a chance to sit down, you know, with with any world leader and ask them questions. What would you ask them? What would you want to know, right? We're, we're really trying to just talk with you, communicate with you, see how you think, see how you answer, but not stump you, right? They're not meant to be hard questions. So I, I, I again, I think if people can be themselves and just um, let us use this as an opportunity to get to know them and understand their motivations and their goals, that's really what we're trying to get out of it. the people who are evaluating the applications are evaluating the, the videos as part of the application. So as your application goes under evaluation, um, we're looking at all of the things. We're looking at your transcripts. We're reading any written essays, if that's part of it. We're watching any video essays, if that's part of it. We are assessing an interview, if that's part of it. You know, we're, we're looking at test scores, if that's a part of it. So, you know, we're, we're, it's each application, each piece of the application is like, a piece of a puzzle, right? Each part gives us something that helps us understand the whole picture of you. So they're all important for different reasons. They all give us something a little different, but they come together to paint the picture of who you are and whether or not this program is going to make the most sense for you, be good for you, and that you'll be able to contribute in the program as well. So yeah, we're, we're evaluating every aspect. We, you know, definitely try to communicate as clearly and as transparently as we can. It's important for us to make sure that we're setting clear expectations on our end so that candidates aren't confused and don't know. Um, and also that we're understanding of the fact that candidates are, are overwhelmed. It's a big process. It can be scary. It can be overwhelming. And so, you know, we do publish our deadlines right on our website. We want candidates to be able to see when we're accepting applications for each round. Um, if candidates have questions beyond what's on our website, we certainly want them to feel like they can reach out. Um, if people watch this video and they take nothing away from it, I hope they see that like we're friendly people, right? We want people to be able to feel comfortable reaching out and saying, you know, not just, hey, be you, but hey, Dana, you know, hey, you know, other person on your team. I have a question. I'm not sure what to do. Can you help advise me? 
we want to do that. We don't want you making assumptions. We want don't want you working, you know, to do things you don't need to do. We want you to say, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do this. Can you help? When do you need that? That would help me understand. So if something's not clear, we want them to reach out and ask us and know that we're there to do our best. We obviously have a limited number of staff and a large volume of applicants. So we ask people to be patient, obviously, as we go through and respond. But we try to be as, as responsive as possible. We set up multiple opportunities for candidates to connect with us. We do multiple events throughout the year, whether they're, you know, um, webinars or information sessions or advising sessions, office hours, chats, just to give as many opportunities as possible for people to say, I want to connect with you in a small group, one-on-one, -on -one, large group, whatever it might be. I've got questions and maybe I don't want to email you or call you. I'd rather do this. So we, we just try to be, to make it as easy as possible, knowing that you know, we still have deadlines and we still have 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 ways we need to, to operate, but we want people to not feel so overwhelmed or scared too. I would like to tell people that regardless of what type of program they're thinking about, they should strongly consider Boston, right? If nothing else, let me give a pitch to Boston. Boston is an incredible city to earn an education. It is a hub for education. Um, we're not only an international hub, but we're also a hub for key industries. So technology, finance, healthcare, innovation, sustainability, what, whatever it may be. That means we have direct access to a lot of great resources right at your fingertips. And at BU in particular, and Questrom in particular, we're located right in the heart of the city. So you really, you walk out the doors and it's there, it's right there. So it is just a great place. There are so many schools where students can collaborate with students at other schools too. It's just a great city. So first thing, first pitch I would say, you know, is to make sure people understand really the, the, the real value there is to coming to Boston. The other thing I would say as they're considering programs and thinking of Questrom, I would say, um, you know, every school is going to give you a good education. You're not going to go to an accredited school that doesn't give you a good foundation, but we're each a little different in different ways, right? In particular, we're, we're talking about specialized master's programs. So we're each very, very specialized and very unique in what we teach. So do your research, look at the curriculum, make sure the curriculum we offer fits with what you're looking to learn and your career goals afterwards. But know that at Questrom, you know, some of the things I think we do that I think are unique and, and, and different, we are a really big university. We offer some amazing resources at Boston University, but our programs are relatively small. You get to know everyone. We have an incredibly collaborative culture. There's a huge focus on teamwork. Um, you'll learn from everyone in their backgrounds. You'll come out with this great tight knit network. Um, we also have um, you know, a big focus on different sectors, right? We have a big focus on technology and healthcare and sustainability and all of those things. So if those are things you could see yourself working in, you know, I think that that makes a lot of sense too. Um, we have a really big focus on um, experiential opportunities as well. So all of our programs, regardless of which one you're interested in, have some sort of opportunity to either partner with a company, work on a real project, do an internship, whatever it might be. So I think that's another thing, the piece of advice I'd give is talk, you know, look at how at a program you're choosing, you'll be able to actually apply what you're learning and that it's applicable because that's something I think we do really well too. So yeah, there's, there's a lot I could tell you and, and I would love to dig into each of the, the programs we offer, but they're so unique, you know, the takeaway, go to our go to our website. We have this great program comparison chart that's on our website that actually takes all of our programs and puts them into a chart with very clear what makes them different, what they do, what they offer, who it's for. Um, that's a great place to start. You'll you can see the differences between the different programs and start to figure out which one makes the most sense for you and what we're looking at. And then look at our class profile. See, you know, what are the typical um, people you bring in, you know, what what are the things you're looking for? And then last, talk to people who are in the program who've done it. Reach out to our current students. We have ambassadors for all, all of our programs and they're right on our website. You can connect with them, you can email them, you can see their names, you can reach out to them directly, you can um, set up time to connect with them. They've been in your shoes. They had to make the decision you're making. So, and now they're in it and they've done it here and they can talk about what Questrom has to offer. So I think that's, the, that's where I'll end this, but that's, a lot of advice, but that's the advice I would give um, for people as they're, they're looking at this process.